Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries in regards to this somewhat unusual exoplanet you see right here, known as WASP-121b, a planet that was already quite extreme when it was originally discovered, but has now been confirmed to be even more extreme, possessing one of the strangest water cycles we've ever seen anywhere. But more importantly, in this video, we'll be talking a little bit more about these very unusual hot Jupiters, many of which have been discovered in the last few years, and the most thorough analysis of the atmosphere of such planet, with the recent study doing a very good job at allowing us to see what happens in the atmosphere of this planet, both on the dark side and of course on the side facing the star. But to start, so where exactly is this planet and what sort of a planet is this? WASP-121b is essentially a typical gas giant, as you can see from this NASA simulation you can find in the description below, and it's located about 880 light years away from planet Earth, orbiting what's known as an F-type star, a star that's slightly larger and more massive than our own Sun. But even though generally in terms of mass and in terms of size, this planet is somewhat similar to Jupiter, Due to its proximity to the star, it actually possesses a lot of properties we cannot even imagine. And so for many decades now, the scientists were trying to figure out exactly what happens around these planets, how exactly these planets form, and more importantly, whether such a planet existed in the solar system sometimes in the past. Mostly because these seem to be extremely common across various star systems, but they don't seem to exist anywhere near us. But because of their size and their mass, they are generally relatively easy to find. As a matter of fact, one of the first exoplanets to have ever been confirmed was this exoplanet right here known as 51 Pegasi b, also known as Bellerophon. So because of how common these particular planets are, it's always been super interesting for the scientists to figure out what happens in their atmosphere, and more importantly, what happens in the atmosphere of tidally locked planets. Planets with one side always locked toward the star, and the other side always away from the star. And because these are such common objects that have been discovered in pretty much most of the red dwarf systems as well, with various planets being tidally locked for one reason or another, it's actually really important for the scientists to try to figure out what happens to the atmosphere in these very common planetary systems. Moreover, because so many different hot Jupiters have been discovered and so many have been already confirmed by various investigations, and also seem to interact in a very unusual way with the parent star itself, a lot of these investigations have been extremely important in order to understand how various star systems evolve. For example, we know that several different systems have already been discovered where the hot Jupiter orbiting the star, usually with an orbit of less than approximately 30 hours, often interacts with the star in different ways. Specifically, it actually even causes various flares on the star's surface because of the magnetic interactions. We also know that generally these hot Jupiters will unlikely to have any moons or possibly even planets near them, mostly because they are too close to the star to maintain permanent moons and their gravitational interaction with nearby planets will also cause some of those planets to either be absorbed by the star or by this particular planet. Not to mention that some of these hot Jupiters have been discovered to be extremely odd. For example, WASP-12b is known to be one of the darkest, if not the darkest, planets to have ever been found. Some of these planets also turn into what's known as poofy planets. They expand to tremendous radii. And some of them even develop a sort of a connection to the star, where the star starts to slowly absorb the planet. And so being able to have a very detailed analysis of at least one of these hot Jupiters is actually really important just to see how things work somewhere out there. So what exactly did the scientists discover in this particular case? So first of all, this is at a distance of just over 800 light years away from us, and a single orbit is roughly around 30 hours. And one of the first discoveries coming from this planet is in regards to the brightness of the day side versus night side. It seems that the night side is about 10 times fainter than the day side. And this is actually really interesting because you'd expect the night side to be much, much darker, but it's not very likely because of the super high temperatures around this planet. And because even the dark side sort of glows because of the temperatures involved. And the temperature difference is quite extreme. On the day side, the maximum temperature is around 3000 Kelvin. At this temperature, there are very few elements, actually like three or four elements, that do not melt. Everything else would melt or even evaporate. 
But the dark side is a little bit cooler, it's approximately 1500 Kelvin, which means that a lot of things that melt on the day side will then most likely condense on the dark side. And some of the previous studies have already discovered the presence of water around this planet. And this paper established that there's definitely a water cycle, but not the same water cycle as the one on Earth. Here the water molecule completely falls apart on the day side, just to then recombine on the dark side when it gets a little bit cooler. In other words, the day side only possesses hydrogen and oxygen and a lot of other materials, but then as the atmosphere moves around to the dark side, it sort of changes back into water gas. You can actually see how all of this changes depending on the position of the planet around the star by looking at one of these simulations in the description below. And obviously right now nobody has any idea what this type of a water cycle would do to such a planet. It's very likely that because the gas is present on the dark side, it might actually do something to the atmosphere and potentially even have certain effects on the planet that are not really understood just yet. With the water cycle itself being sustained by extremely fast moving winds that were detected in the study. Here the winds whip around the planet at 5 kilometers per second. But naturally water is not the only thing on this planet. As a matter of fact it seems to possess a lot of stuff. And most of the stuff does the same thing. It goes through various cycles between being a gas to potentially being a liquid. For example the scientists have discovered that there is quite a lot of corundum. The stuff that we usually find in different sapphires and different rubies. And several other elements including magnesium, iron, vanadium and what's known as perovskite all of which create different types of exotic rain in the atmosphere of this very unusual planet. So this planet doesn't just have iron rain, it seems to have sapphire rain, ruby rain and possibly a lot of other rains we can't even imagine just yet. In the process also discovering that unlike other planets in for example the solar system, the temperature changes on this planet are also kind of unusual. For example on a day side the temperature actually increases with altitude. Deeper in the planet the temperature is about 2500 Kelvin, on the outskirts of the planet it's about 3500 Kelvin, a thousand degree temperature difference, whereas on the dark side it's the opposite. The temperature decreases from 1800 Kelvin deeper in to about 1500 Kelvin on the outskirts. And this unusual thermal inversion as the scientists refer to it is at the moment somewhat difficult to explain, but also very likely creates a lot of properties for this planet and a lot of similar planets that we cannot really understand just yet. With the hottest point of the planet being in the east on the day side, mostly because of the extreme winds on the surface that transfer all of this heat into the eastern direction. And as all of this gas travels across the day side, it gets heat up by the star and increases in temperature until that eastern point with the entire atmosphere of the planet recirculating every 20 hours. But now the next step for the scientists is to try to use some of the time on the James Webb Space Telescope to try to see if they can also find some of the carbon present in the atmosphere as well. Because by discovering carbon and specifically carbon monoxide that could be present here, the scientists can finally figure out how these planets form and where exactly they actually come from. And figuring out their origin and why they don't exist in the solar system has always been sort of the biggest mystery in regards to hot Jupiters. And so for now that's kind of all the scientists learned from this particular study and from this particular planet known as WASP-121b. Once we discover something else and once the scientists find something else unusual about this planet or some of the other hot Jupiters out there, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. And also maybe consider checking out the current fundraiser that's going on and the reasons for it in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.